Okay, welcome back. Now we're on question number seven from this P4 um, International A Level January 2021 paper um, from Edexcel. This question here is about, first of all, part A. It's got this diagram, but that's related to part B. But part A says, find the integral of e to the power of 2x times sine x with respect to x. Now, they didn't tell us how to find the integral. They didn't say which method to use. And if we study this, this is a new style of question that's that's been coming up lately that isn't really come up before. I think the last time it came up was in a P4 paper. It never really came up, never really saw it in the old C4 or C34 papers, as far as I remember. I might be wrong, but I never really noticed it before. This is the type of question where you've got to think a bit carefully, and uh, there's a slightly different technique in doing it. First of all, we can see very clearly that it is not um, a case of the reverse of the chain rule. Because if it's a reverse of the chain rule, then inside one of those functions would be a term which if you differentiate it, you get the term that's multiplying it. So for example, um, this says sine of x. The differential of x is 1. So you know, outside this function, multiplying is not, it's not a constant. And e to the power of 2x. What's inside this function is 2x. The differential of 2x is, is x. And you've not got an x term multiplying, you've got sine x multiplying it. So it's, it's not a reverse of the chain rule type of question at all. So the only other really uh, way of solving it, or, or maybe one of the ways of solving it that we can see, is using integration by parts, where you have two separate functions multiplied by each other, and you call one of them um, u, and then you differentiate it. You call the other one dv dx, and you integrate it. Okay, and there's the formula in the formula book, which you can refer to if you have to, although I don't normally refer to that formula because it's a nice, simple way of setting it out that you don't need to then use a formula book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that method. Now, but the problem is, you see, a lot of people will think that, oh, I can't use that method because if I differentiate it so for that method, one of those two products has to get simpler when you differentiate it. Otherwise, you'll keep going on forever. All right, you'll keep getting things which you won't be able to integrate um, on their own. You'll have to keep using integration by parts. And that's kind of what's going to happen here, except there's a way to deal with it once we get to a certain step. And I'll show you how to deal with it in that step. But basically, um, we just have to start doing it that way. Normally, you would think, oh, I can't do that. I have to choose the one that breaks down to be by u. When I differentiate, it becomes simpler. The next step, I'll be able to integrate that thing, and I'll be finished. Okay, but unfortunately, that doesn't work here. But I'm still going to start, um, you know, going through this in, in that way. So I'm going to, first of all, I've got the integral of e to the power of 2x times sine of x with respect to x. I'm going to call my u e to the power of 2x and my dv dx, I'm going to call that sine x. Okay, so I have to differentiate this to give me du dx. Now, differentiating e to the power of something, it stays the same. It doesn't change, but then I have to also multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. A differential of 2x is 2, so it's 2e to the power of 2x. And in this one I have to integrate to give me v. The integral of sine x is minus cosine x. Why? Because if I differentiate cosine x, I get minus sine x. So the, the integration of sine x gives you minus cosine x. Okay, now with integration by parts, what you do is the following. Now I'm going to write this like, I'm going to keep writing this step down, even though um, I normally wouldn't. For this question, I'm going to, because it's kind of going to help us to answer the question. For integration by parts, the, the, you'll see the formula. So it'll say u times v minus the integral of v times du dx with respect to x. I mean, I just set it out like this, and I know it's going to be this number, this term times that term without the integral sign. So e to the power of 2x times cosine x. It's going to be negative, it's minus cosine x, minus the integral of these two multiplied, okay? So it's going to be, I'll just write it out for now, 2e to the power of 2x times minus cosine x dx. So before I actually go any further, as I said, I'm going to keep writing this, this step down here. So e to the power of 2x times sine x dx equals minus e to the power of 2x times cosine x, have a minus and a minus, I'm going to call it plus, take out the 2, 
So I'm left with inside this function, e to the, inside the integral, e to the power of 2x times cosine x dx. Now it looks like now, hold on, if I now integrate this, I have to use the same integration by parts again, and it's not going to get any simpler, and I'm going to keep going on forever. And that's what it does look like in the beginning. However, just be patient, and you'll see the next step it will work out. So I'm going to use the same technique now for this part here. So I have the integral of, if I make my writing a bit smaller now, e to the power of 2x times sine x dx equals, you got minus e to the power of 2x times the cosine of x plus 2 times, and now we're going to have the integral of this. Okay, so I have to write that down. So I know in this case my u here this time is e to the power of 2x, and my dv dx this time is cosine x. So my du dx becomes now, again, 2 e to the power of 2x, but my v becomes the integral of cosine x, which is sine x. So when I do the integral of this, it's u times v, which is e to the power of 2x times sine x, minus these two multiplied, the integral of these two multiplied, which is going to be 2 times e to the power of 2x times sine x. Okay, so that's with respect to x. All right, now, this is where you'll see something happening. So I've got the integral of e to the power of 2x sine x with respect to x is equal to minus e to the power of 2x times cosine x plus, I'll multiply this out, I have 2 e to the power of 2x times sine x minus 4 times the integral of e to the power of 2x sine x dx. Now this is where you find something that will help us. This is, this is the stage where we can deal with this uh, in a proper way. So what we'll see is this and this, the like terms. Okay, the like terms. So I can rewrite this by adding 4 times e to the power of 2x sine x dx to both sides. So I'll have the integral of e to the power of 2x sine x dx plus 4 times the integral of e to the power of x, 2x, sorry, sine x with respect to x equals minus e to the power of 2x cosine x plus 2 e to the power of 2x sine x. See, they're like terms, and I can actually now add them together. Okay, now I know I'm not supposed to do this. I'm just going to go down here so I don't have to go to the next page. I'll just go down here off the page. In the, in the real exam, of course, you're just going to go to the next page. But these two can be added together and give me 5 times the integral of e to the power of 2x sine x dx. And that's equal to what we have here, which is minus e to the power of 2x cosine x plus 2 e to the power of 2x sine x. So now I can say my, the integral of e to the power of 2x times sine x dx is equal to all of this divided by 5, minus e to the power of 2x times cosine x plus 2 e to the power of 2x sine x divided by 5. And don't forget to put your plus c. Okay, put your plus c in the end. Okay, I'll just put it right at the end, plus c. Okay, um, so here we have the answer to the question. All right, so this question is really um, a new style of question. And, you know, you think uh, by this stage that you're going to be going on forever and ever. Or how am I going to stop? It's going to keep going on because this will keep integrating to give me something like this. But when you get to that stage, you'll notice here that these two are like terms. You can bring them together and you're just left with now one integral. And that's the integral of what you had to find. That's exactly what we had to find. e to the power of 2x sine x. That's what we had to find. So we can just then divide both sides by 5 and you've got your integral. Okay, that's the technique that first appeared in the last P4 paper that I saw, which was the first session that they had. Um, I think it was in the specimen paper, actually. Yeah, it was in the specimen paper, right? So I remember, I remember it was in the specimen paper, and that was the first time I saw this type of question in the C4. So there's something that you've got to be um, very careful about. I don't think it's even in this P4 book, such types of questions, as far as I remember. So that's something that's very, very important for you to know. It's a very important technique here of how to integrate something of this form. 
Okay, at this stage you bring them together uh, and then you can find the integral. Okay, so um, it's important for you to practice questions like this. Okay, that's number seven, um, part A. Now for part B. Now, part B says, um, the figure two shows a sketch of part of the curve with this equation. The finite region bounded by the curve and the x-axis shown in shade, shown shaded in figure two show that the exact area is e to the power of 2 pi plus 1 over 5. Okay, so we need to find here a few things. First of all, we need to find the place where this crosses the x-axis. Okay, we need to know that to know our limits. Okay, because we have to integrate e to the power of 2x sine x with respect to x, which we've already done on the previous page. Okay, um, and we have to find the... Um, yeah, we know we know this is zero. We have to find what this plate, what what this coordinate is here. Okay, this coordinate. Let me call it x one. Okay, so we know that x one is found by equating uh, y equals y to zero. That's on the x-axis. Y equals zero. So e to the power of two x times sine x equals zero. There's two solutions to this. One of them is e to the power of two x equals zero, and the other one is when sine x equals zero. Okay, so um, let's have a look. X is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so so we got e to the power of two x equals zero. Now e to the power of two x never equals zero. That's not going to be undefined. And sine x equals zero at zero, and at um, pi. Okay, those are the first two places where sine x equals zero. Okay. Um, all right, so we're going to deal with differentiation, so we're going to call it pi because we're dealing with radian. So the, the two places where the, this is going to be equal to zero, the first two places are zero and pi. So x1 is equal to pi. So that's going to be a pi up there, right? So you have to integrate e to the power of 2x sine x with respect to x between zero and pi. So now we already have this integral from the last page, so I'm going to bring it over. Okay, so this is the integral that we just found of this. So this is going to be, I'll just put it like this, this is going to be now um, minus, minus e to the power of 2x cosine x plus 2e to the power of 2x sine x over 5. And we're going to have the limits of pi and 0. Okay, so that was from the last page. So I'll put this out of the way now. Okay, now, so that's already been integrated. All we have to do now is substitute the values of pi and zero in here. That's going to be minus e to the power of two pi times the cosine of pi plus two e to the power of two pi times the sine of pi over five minus, and we're gonna have minus e to the power of zero times cosine zero plus 2e to the power of 0 times sine 0 over 5. So e minus e to the power of 2 pi. Now the cosine of pi is minus 1. The cosine of pi is minus 1. Just to prove it, radian mode, the, the cosine of pi, cosine of pi, Is minus one. I know that, and the sine of pi is zero. So this is going to be this is going to be over five. The sine of pi is zero. We know that, okay? And I'm going to have minus, and I'm going to have here minus e to the power of zero, which is minus one. The cosine of zero is equal to one. That's minus e to the power of zero, which is one. So it's, this is just going to be become minus one. And the sine of zero is zero, so this becomes zero. So it's minus one over five. Okay, so you end up with e to the power of 2 pi plus 1 all over 5. And is that what we had to show? Exactly had to show. So there's the answer to part B. Okay, and I think that was it. Was there part C? No, that was it. Okay, so that's question number 7. Pretty simple. Once you've integrated it, you just have to substitute pi and 0 into here. Why pi and 0? Because those are the two places, the two first places where this is going to um, hit um, where, where y is going to be 0. Why is, why is 0? 
when sine x is equal to 0, that's going to be at not just when x equals 0, the next time when x equals pi. Okay, this will, this part will never equal 0, right? But x equals 0 when you got, um, you know, sine, sine x equals 0 when x is 0 and x is pi, the first two places. Okay, so there's the answer for that question. I hope that was clear. The first part of the question, very important, new kind of type of integration technique that they've been they've started testing us on so you have to be aware of it and you have to try to practice such questions um, other questions from this paper of January 2021 p4 can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this area towards the end of this video and in this area over here you will find other questions which are to do with integration from p4 and here you will have um, a place to subscribe to my channel and on the top of the page you can click to find another past paper you might be wanting to watch about P4. Thank you for watching and see you soon.